Welcome to the Resources of Southwest Virginia program. We'd like to thank you for dropping by today and I know that we have a program that's really going to perk your interest and that information that you may have thought of or heard about that we're going to talk about today. So let me introduce my guest. First of all, to my right is Ms. Joyce Wolf, who's with Southwest Virginia Community Health Systems, and that's with Twin City Medical Center. And to my left is Cindy Corrigan, and she's a health educator. And as ladies, thank you both for coming. And Joyce, before we really get into the program, tell us a little something about yourself and, and where you work, your job description, and all, how long you've been in it. Well, I've been in this area all of my life, and uh, I have been with Southwest Virginia Community Health Systems for three years, and I have been working uh, with the Affordable Care Act for the past two years, helping people sign up for insurance. Um, I have folks come to me, um, you know, they ask questions about, you know, what can I afford? Um, there's like three or four things that we take into consideration. Uh, one is the age. Um, and of course, whether they smoke or not, and then what area they live in. Uh, we'll, and of course, their income will determine what type of subsidy they qualify for. Uh, we also have uh, people come to us uh, inquiring about Medicaid. We do that as well. We help people sign up to see if maybe they qualify for Medicaid or teen care in the state of Tennessee. Um, well, that's great. You know, and that, that's something that, that probably we've heard a lot of and some of the folks watching are someone with an interest that maybe just been laid off can use information that we're going to bring to them today. Correct. So Cindy, thank you. Thank you. And as a health educator with Twin City Medical, what is your you know your job description? Uh, how long you've been in Bristol or in the area <laughs> and all? Okay, I am not a native of Bristol. Um, I've only been here for about 18 years. I graduated from ETSU with a degree in public health and was just thrilled to find a job as a community health educator with the Southwest Virginia Community Health Systems. Um, I was hired in 2003, so I am going on my 12th year this month as a community health educator with this organization. Uh, my job pretty much entails me to be a advocate with the resources that are out in the community and bring them to our clientele that come to see us so that we are able to inform them of the resources that they may be able to benefit from their own <coughs> community. I'm a member of a few coalitions and uh, collaboratives in the area for Bristol, Virginia and in Sullivan County. Great. I'm going to start with uh, <coughs> Joyce and a question that I was asked this week when I mentioned to someone that I was going to have you all on. And Either one can answer or add to. How's that? Sounds good. Great. If I'm working part time and I have to use the Affordable Cares Act and I come to you and you help me find insurance and then I get hired full time by a company that offers me insurance. Now, do I have the option of keeping what I already have, or do I have to drop that and take the insurance with the company that I've gone to work full time for that they offer? Okay. Yes, you do have to take the insurance through the company if they offer you full time. The only way that you can keep what you already have is if the insurance is going to cost you more than nine and a half percent of your income, then you can keep it through the marketplace. Over nine and a half percent, if I if I keep my Affordable Cares Act insurance. If it costs more than nine and a half percent through your employer for you to take employer coverage, uh -huh. then you can keep the insurance through the marketplace. Okay. <clears throat> do you do you run into a lot of this? A lot of people with this problem are asking these this about their insurance. I do run into people asking me that question, but um, for the most part, I don't have any problem with it. No. You don't have any problem. No, because most of them. Um, the insurance through their employer usually does cost more than nine and a half percent. So, and that is just for the employee only. It doesn't count like if they're adding on a spouse or they're adding children on. Uh, it doesn't matter if it costs more than nine and a half percent when you start adding on family members. It's only for the employee. Okay, um, and Cindy, in your your <coughs> travels and, and the work that you do, I'm sure that you run in 
to a lot of folks out in the community as a health educator, and you're talking about the Affordable Cares Act. Uh, what are some of the biggest questions that you've been asked that you've been able to help folks with? A lot of the questions that I ask is, will I qualify? Do I have to get this? The biggest concern is how much it's going to cost. Um, Joyce actually is the Affordable Care expert, so she would be able to answer that question be answer that. better. But uh, to answer the questions of the people in the community, but that is the, the biggest questions that they do ask is how much it's going to cost. What am I? What if I can't afford to pay for it? And then the concern about the penalty if you don't get the insurance seems to be the biggest concern. Okay. <clears throat> and Joyce, in in getting back to that. <clears throat> What's the biggest questions that you ask? Are they the same as what Cindy's running into and the folks that are, do I have to give out this much information and, and how much it's gonna cost me? Yes, um, most of them were thrilled with the results. Um, for instance, if you have a single person and they, there is income guidelines. So a single person making $11,670 a year would qualify for subsidies, which is the tax credit. Uh, to make it more affordable for them. Now, if you fall below 11670 and you're a single person, of course, you're in what is called the gap. You don't qualify for any subsidies. So, therefore, the insurance is unaffordable. Um, those people who fall um, in the gap uh, will not be charged a penalty when they file their taxes because their income was not high enough. Okay. Are there changes, and I know that every day we're reading in the paper and seeing on the news that that the Affordable Cares Act is changing or will change, and oh, have you seen or is there any current changes coming along that's going to affect the folks that now are using uh, the marketplace? No, I haven't heard of any. So right now, basically, everything's still the same mm -hmm. yes. that, that we're having. <clears throat> exactly, yes. So most people are out. If they've got insurance, they better keep what they've got. Exactly. And be happy that we're, you know, we're able to, uh, to provide it, really, mm -hmm. in, the, in the long run. Cindy, <clears throat> as a health educator, you're out in the public educating your as you say you you meet with a lot of resource groups mm -hmm. uh different uh coalition groups yes and all and with these groups uh what really is the main message you take to them the main message that i take to them is who we are to op what services we offer to um residents in southwest virginia and northeast tennessee so that we can all work together to improve the health in the community, uh, depending on whatever the group may be. Uh, I mean, a diabetes <clears throat> coalition, a smoking cessation, tobacco control, nutrition. Uh, so we just want to offer our services and let the other people in the community know that we are there if their clientele needs to come and see us. Okay, and, and you're saying if you are <clears throat> if you need, to need help, come and see mm -hmm. you. Now, is this at a reduced cost? Is this through your insurance or? It could be either or. We are a uh, community health care center, so we see people who have insurance and people who do not have insurance. Uh, we, we will not refuse anyone's service, and your service is based on your income if you do not have insurance. Uh, we have a sliding scale fee based on your income um, and your family size. Okay. <clears throat> so those, yeah. I'm sorry, I've been interrupting. No, go right So those people that fall in what is called the gap, um, they are the type of people that uh, could take advantage of our services that we offer. Um, we have sliding scale, like Cindy said, and we've got A, B, and C. Uh, and of course, it's based on your family size and your income. Um, so if you qualified for like slide fee A, uh, it's a $20 copay so that would cover you to come and see our doctors. If you had any lab work done while you were there, of course, that $20 would cover those labs. And then we also have a slide fee B and a slide fee C. B is 33% of the charge and C is 66% of the charge. Um, we also have a medication assistance program that helps people with their medications. 
Okay, and, and that's, that's really where I wanted to go once we got into this was a lot of folks fall into that gap. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, I don't know <clears throat> that, that if you're seeing an increase coming into it or a decrease because they say the unemployment is dropping all across the state. And with both of you, are you seeing an increase in people falling into those gaps? Yes. And each year, the <clears throat> poverty level, um, the scale goes up. So last year, say for instance, it was 11500 for a single person to qualify for a subsidy. This year, it's 11700 so a person that qualified last year didn't necessarily qualify this year because of the scale going up. So if I made eleven five this year, I don't qualify. Exactly. So what do I do? I don't qualify. Where do I go from there? You, you come to a community health center and we can help you, um, you know, with things like your labs and seeing a doctor and your medicines. And, uh, we also have a vision uh, center and a uh, dental center that they could take advantage of as well. Okay, and that's at the sliding scale? Yes. In the gap? Yes. Okay. Cindy, at the clinic, <clears throat> And I call it the clinic, and you you, you go straight to the center. I know that. Are you seeing a lot more people taking advantage? And I, and when I say taking advantage, I'm not saying that I'm taking advantage of something. It's right. it's there, and and we can use this because mm -hmm. we have no other options right now. Do you see an increase yes, in that? Yes, we're seeing a lot more people uh, using our resources that we have available for them. Uh, folks who have just recently lost a job or just maybe moved into the area or lost their insurance through various reasons. Uh, we are seeing a lot more people come in. Uh, it's, it's, it's surprising though how many people don't really know that we're, we're there. Uh, so we are doing everything we can. That's one of the reasons we are thrilled to be on this show is to let folks in the area know that uh, we, are, we are here in Bristol, Virginia and at our other clinic sites that we would love to help them if they need our services. But yes, we are noticing an increase in the services. Okay, and Joyce, what area in Southwest Virginia does your clinic or, or medical center cover and the, and the work that you do across Southwest Virginia? We cover uh, Washington County and Sullivan County. And Sullivan, so you go into Tennessee? Yes. With Because there is no boundaries or borders with the Affordable Cares Act. Right. right? Right. Okay, so you can cover both. So, right. that, so if, if our viewers in Bristol, Virginia hear this and they say, hey, I've got my buddy over in Bristol, Tennessee, I need to call him and tell him. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Now, Cindy, where are the other clinics or medical centers located? We have one clinic in Tazewell County, Virginia called Tazewell Community Health. We have another a clinic in Smith County in the Saltville Medical, it's the Saltville Medical Center in Saltville, Virginia, and then we have one in Washington County, Virginia, in Meadowview, at the Meadowview Health Clinic, right above Abingdon. And they all offer the same services yes, mm -hmm. that you're offering here in Bristol, Virginia. Yes, sir, that is correct. So if I'm, uh, I'm unemployed mm -hmm. and I qualify and I fall into those gaps, mm -hmm. then I can come make an appointment mm -hmm. and be able to see a doctor and get dental or vision mm -hmm. that's correct the dental and the vision is only in the saltville clinic at the moment okay. but it does not matter if you can find a way to get there if you're seen at the twin city medical center or any of the centers uh, you still have access to those services and and when we say find a way to get there we mean transportation do, do you know how to, a way that they can get there well uh, no the transportation would be on their their own merit at this point unfortunately well i'm going to plug another agency sure. is that okay with that's you that's great mm -hmm. district three senior services mm -hmm. offers transportation to mm -hmm. saltwell okay great or up Where into you? smith county, smith county. Mm -hmm. to either any any mm -hmm. of those so if so can I'm anyone working, take advantage of that service if they group. are a senior, senior citizen, citizen. Mm -hmm. okay. and to qualify for that is age only, 
and it's probably the cost on it is about a dollar. Oh, great. So if, if I have to go for vision or <clears throat> dental, mm -hmm. right, and that's in salt water. Correct. Correct. And I get a hold of you, and you make contact with District 3, and they pick up uh, at the, what, the Douglas Senior Center in Bristol. Mm -hmm. the, they run there on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. They could transfer up to Saltwell. Oh, that's wonderful. See, that's how the network, that's one of the purposes mm -hmm. for the program that we're doing today. It's the network and let folks know that there is help there's free or sliding scale medication, help for them, doctors, treatments, and a way of getting you there. If, if, if that's not going, stepping out of my bounds with your program, but that's something that, that you all can really take advantage of with some of your folks that really don't have transportation. Correct. Because the way I look at it is that if, if they're having to come in and they're falling into that gap, chances are, uh, they're having enough problems feeding themselves, mm -hmm. let alone have a car and transportation and ways to get places. Well, that's great. So, um, I just I wish there was something like that for the the younger folks as well, because there's a lot of them have trouble getting there. Yeah, and that that really that creates a problem. And you bring up an interesting question when you say to younger folks, on a percentage of age-wise, how many on a percentage now, mm -hmm. 35 and younger are you seeing? Oh my goodness, I would say probably half, at least half, 50 percent. 50 percent. Yes. And it's, it's unemployed, can't find work. Correct. And in this this area, uh, you know, on my way up here, I hear one of the radio stations saying, if you need a job, come on down, we're hiring. This, place is hiring today, mm -hmm. but yet we've still got this high unemployment rate in, 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 in our rural area, we're called rural. Uh, if I came to your office, make, and I have to call and make an appointment, don't I? Or can I just walk in? You can walk in. Okay. Yes. So I just walk into your office and I'm 34 years old, I've got a wife and two kids and no visible means of support, no work. I've tried everything and I can't find a job. So now what can you do from there to help me either find work, get insurance, so on and so forth? Well, unfortunately, since he doesn't have a, the family doesn't have a job, um, the only thing that we could probably help him with is our slide fee program in order to come to one of our facilities and see our uh, doctor. Uh, we can help them with the medications, uh, if they have any medications that they need. Um, and there again, the problem is if they needed dental work or they needed to see an eye doctor, they would have a problem with transportation yeah. to get to Saltville. We can do the service for them, they just have a problem getting there. And I guess, you know, um, Cindy, I guess, you know, if, if need be, we could probably transport them back and forth to Saltville, could we not? That would be a possibility. Well, it, it's a possibility. It's just but not anything that we actually do right now as far as, you know, um, on a schedule or a regular basis. Well, it also raises up a question of liability. True. When you're, when you're transporting, uh, if you have a van and you're licensed mm -hmm. to do that and so on, so on and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot of steps if you wanted to try that that you would have to, a lot of hoops to jump through. Right. But the, but the main thing I, I think that that I want to get across to the public and the folks that's watching uh, is exactly what you offer <clears throat> that, and, and like you said earlier, then, uh, Joyce, in the gaps, what's either out there that's free or on a sliding scale. And I think the main, the main thing is when I was in, employed and working and I'm retired, uh, the biggest benefit that I got, or the, or the biggest pay raise that I got, was a company that provided me with benefits, and especially health insurance. So I think that's what more people are looking for, even if they're making $12,000 a year, 
fifteen thousand dollars. If that's all they can make working part time somewhere, and we know that with the Affordable Care Act, anything over what twenty nine hours is full time. Correct. So if I'm working twenty eight hours a week and making fifteen thousand dollars a year, do I fall into the gap that I can come and and apply for and get insurance come through the Affordable Care Act. Did you say as a single person? Yeah. Yes. You qualify for the Affordable Care Act. <coughs> okay. Yes. And you would qualify for subsidies, which is your tax credit to help towards your, uh, to bring your premium down. Um, they could still also qualify for our sliding scale. You know, a lot of people do that even though they have insurance because they have like high co-pays high deductibles, and so it's cheaper for them to use our sliding scale. Um, and what happens is we still bill the insurance company and then whatever's left over is, is um, processed under the sliding scale. Hmm, okay. So I, I'm still available and can apply for and get my insurance through the Affordable Care Act at yes. a reduced, really a reduced rate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. We said you about fifty percent of the people that you see are under the age of thirty-five or younger. Right. Okay. And the groups that you go out and work with, what age groups, or is it all ages that you? <clears throat> it depends on what type of coalition or what type of event I'm doing, but it seems like it actually is a little bit older. It's more middle age. I'm I'm thinking more. Thirty-five to sixty seems to be the group that. Uh, comes to any type of health fair event or, or health event that we're having or our target audience that we seem to be dealing with. Okay, and with the baby boomers mm -hmm. coming in, and by the year 2030, we've got what, 30 million more people are gonna turn 65 mm -hmm. and older. So actually, the younger, the younger generation is coming up and their employment's not there. Correct. Uh, and we know that folks in our area have to move away to find, especially with your college degree, the employment in this area uh, may not be exactly suited for what they're looking for. So if, if, we're, if we've got this many people coming in to the system, mm -hmm. so to speak, and at age, let's say at age 40, mm -hmm. 45, uh, they're not really looking to change jobs or if they were to get laid off a company go out of business mm -hmm. and i had that happen to me uh when i was 42 years old just went out of business mm -hmm. and i'm on the street saying what do i do i didn't have obamacare i didn't have the affordable cares act i had nothing but my family and me right and now so they can come to you all correct correct so I walk through the door, I'm sitting at one of your trainings, and I hear you talking about this, mm -hmm. and I say, what can I do? What are you going to tell me? I would give you any information we had about an organization, which would be our, our contact address and number, and tell you just give us a call and please come on down and we will be glad to see you as a patient and see what we can do for you and what services we can offer you and your family. And what I qualify for. And what you qualify for, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what, when I come and see Joyce, right? Right. You're going to tell me if I qualify for Affordable Cares Act insurance, whether I can go through the marketplace, if I can hit one of the gaps. Yes. Unfortunately, until Medicaid um, just expands in the state of Tennessee and Virginia, there's, going, there's a lot of people that are falling in the gap. Um, and the only thing that we have to offer them, of course, is our services at our clinics. Okay, and, and this, this really what I'm about to say doesn't pertain to you all, but yet it does in the long run. I get an email this week uh, from a group out of Richmond that says hunger rate in Virginia is at 12%. That 912,700 people go hungry every day in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now, if we've got that many people not able to afford groceries or have food on the table to eat, then one of the smartest things they can do health-wise would be to come and if in Bristol or Sullivan County, 
and these services are offered at the other clinics too. Yes, sir. So actually you cover Bristol, Sullivan County, and then we can go to Worston County, Smith County, Tazewell County. So anyone in those areas can come to one of your offices, mm -hmm. one of your medical centers, and talk to a Joe that's there, mm -hmm. or Cindy, mm -hmm. and apply, yes. and sit down with you, and you can take them right step by step into mm -hmm. what we're doing. You know, that that's something that most people don't really understand about the program, is it's there for us. If you need it, take advantage of it. We let pride get in the way. If you run into a lot of that, Cindy, a lot uh, of people, some, some somewhat. people, are too proud mm -hmm. to ask. Yes. Mm -hmm. How about you? Mm -hmm. They don't want to. They yes. don't want to divulge mm -hmm. all the information that you really need, do they? Well, and believe it or not, most of the people that I run into, if they don't qualify for the Affordable Care Act, and I explain to them what we offer, they're they're stunned. They they didn't know anything about us. So, I think a lot of it is people just don't know that we're here, and they don't they don't know what we have to offer. Okay, and hopefully what, mm -hmm. we're, what we're doing now is going to get that information out there to them. We're coming toward the end of the program, and what I always like to do, and I'll go to each one of you first. First, that didn't work out right. I'll go, I'm going to go to Joyce first. Is there anything that we have left out of the program or information that you can put and add in here at the last, because the last thing is usually the only thing that a lot of people remember about the Affordable Cares Act and, and, and what you all offer. Well, I did do some estimates that I wanted to um, share with people so they could get a pretty good idea of what they're looking at. Uh, the first one was on a, a single person age 35, um, actually making $11,700 a year. And uh, what I came up with is that person would qualify for a $212 a month tax credit, which goes towards the premium payment. So therefore, they could choose a bronze plan. Now, your bronze plans have your higher deductibles. Um, but if they just wanted something that was there in case of an emergency, um, and they would have something in place, uh, the deductible on that one was $2,500 with, with no premium payment. Now they could go on to a silver plan, and a silver plan is your better option if you qualify for subsidy. Uh, they could get a silver plan for around $10 a month with no deductible, and uh, they would pay 50% of everything up to their maximum out of pocket, which is around uh, $1,200. Okay. okay, that's great. Cindy, anything you want to add? I was just going to say, if, if either anyone out there that's watching or any one of their family members has anyone that doesn't have a regular doctor and needs any type of medical assistance, whether you have insurance or not, please give us a call at the Twin City Medical Center or at the Saltville Medical Center or Tazewell Community Health or the Meadowview Health Clinic and we will be more than happy to uh, offer you our services and be of any help for you. That's right. Now folks, there you are. That's an open invitation. Free sliding scale. And let me thank you for being with us today and, and the two ladies especially for sharing this valuable information to us and to you let me thank heritage tv for allowing us to put these programs on because without them this information may never never get to someone who could really use it so until our next program take care and travel safe thank you <music>